Chessington World of Adventures is home to many of the UK's best family attractions. You have Dragon's Fury, Vampire, the new for 2023, Mandrill Mayhem, and of course, Jungle Bus. But on top of those four, there are so many more. But today, as I have done before, two years ago now, which this bit outdated, isn't it? I am going to be ranking the best rides at the Chessington World of Adventures Resort, but this time, I'm doubling it. Because yes, last time I did the puny number of a top 10 and now it is time for a top 20. And I mainly wanted to redo this video because my opinions have changed a lot. And there are a lot of new rides at Chessington as well. We've been spoiled over the years. So be sure to keep watching to find out what number one will be. It's a mystery to even me right now. And if you do go on to enjoy this top 20 and you want to see me redo my Alton Towers list because I haven't done that for years as well, then please be sure to subscribe to the channel. It'd be greatly appreciated. So Chessington World of Adventures. now. After the intro, usually I'll just dilly-dally with loads of pointless information or say like, oh, history time. No. Today, we're going straight to the point. We're going straight into the top 20. So let's begin the list now. Number 20 is Jungle Bus. Now, as much as I said that it was one of the best rides at the park at the start, it's only the first on this list to read out. Get some insane pops of ejector airtime on that ride though. Number 19 is Room on the Broom. Now, some may not count this as a ride per se, because it's more of a walkthrough, but... I don't really care. It's a good walk in and follow the storyline attraction. Number 18 is one of the newest rides at the park and on this list. Ostrich Stampede in the world of Jumanji. It's fun, but um, it, it just doesn't really do much and it's not the most thrilling ride in the world. Number 17 is Tuck Tuck Turmoil, the classic Dodgems ride. That's why it can't be any higher. Can you imagine if I put a Dodgems ride, number one, out of all of the amazing, unique opportunities at the Chessington Resort? Yeah, it's staying in number 17. Number 16 is just opposite Ostrich Stampede in the same area, and that is Mamba Strike. It's a small little Miami flat ride that takes you round, and then round again, and then round again. But it's a good little airtime machine, you know. At number 15, we're on to now, the top 15 is inbound. Starting off with River Rafts. Yes, I have put this this high up. No, I am not tripping. It is such a beautiful creation, and the fact that that drop is only that tall, and it gets you more soaked than other water rides in the park. It truly is the biggest of thumbs up from me. Number 14 is a recently refurbished ride, actually, and that is Sea Storm. A ride where you take your seat in these little boats, and then they go round in a circle, and they spin backwards so you can face your friends, and then they spin back forwards again. It's basically Ostrich Stampede if it was 10 times better. Number 13 is Monkey Swinger. Now, this was actually in my top five or something like that originally. It was really high up. And yes, it is a generic chair swing ride, but those fountains that spray up and hit you whilst you're on the ride made it for me. And they don't even work anymore. They haven't been on for so long, Chessington, please. Saying where are the fountains doesn't just apply to the Gruffalo now, does it? Number 12 is Zufari, a Jeep journey into the fake African plains. And wow, what a safari ride this is. It's a lovely little excursion from the rest of the park. You know, you've got all these big rides and sort of the thrilling 40 mile an hour roller coasters. But it's nice to just sit in a safari jeep and go around and see the giraffes, the rhinos, the Camel Camelopardo, English please. Number 11 is one that I really don't want to put this high up, but I'm gonna have to. Rattlesnake. I do not like this ride because of the severe amounts of pain it puts my body into and the severe amount of uncomfortableness it just has. The reason it's at 11 is because the theming is actually really good and the queue line is also quite cool as well and obviously the fact it is a roller coaster kind of helps. And either way, I know that if I put it lower, everyone would be mad at me. So I've put it at 11. Please don't shoot me. Numero 1-0, we're on to the top 10. Top 10 inbound. How quick was that? Prepare yourself because number 10 is Tomb Blaster, the big indoor shooting dark ride that I actually haven't gone on and used the guns in years because you know every time I go on it I like to take in the surroundings you know because the theming inside that building is incredible like it's some of the best we have in the UK but it is a cool ride I'll go on it once every so often but it's not a necessity to me hopefully one day it gets the cursor all mana treat do it Chessington number nine is unlike rattlesnake this one because obviously that one people are probably gonna think you haven't put it high enough I think number nine you're gonna say I put it too high. Barrel bailout. Now I love this ride to bits, as much as it is just spinning round in barrels and shooting each other with water. It's just bucket loads of fun and you can shoot the queue, the people off ride and everything like that. It's a totally amazing interactive shooting ride. The funny little soundtrack that plays when you go around as well is, honestly, water ride. Do you get it? <laughs> Number eight is Blue Barnacle, the park's 
very well-known pirate ship. And if you didn't know, it used to be known as Black Buccaneer until they decided to completely rip out the entire pirate ship that was Black Buccaneer and replace it with a brand new one. Call it a retrack, if you will. But this is genuinely one of the best pirate ships in the country. It's a whole load of fun. Up next is number seven, which is Cobra. The Zamperla disco in the World Asia area. And of course, this is definitely a favorite for a lot of people, considering right now, it's probably on an 80 minute queue and I'm pretty sure the park is shut. It's a thrilling ride at points, especially if you're on the right side and you actually sort of swing up towards the sky when you get to the spikes. And the little airtime hill in the middle is a great sensation as well. You know what, it's just a solid ride. Although it can hurt a bit in areas that I'm not gonna talk about. Before we get onto the top five, of course, we have number six, which barely missed out on that top five placement. And that is Gruffalo River Ride Adventure, the replacement of the famous Bubbleworks Dark Ride. Now, as much as I prefer Bubbleworks by a mile, Gruffalo is still an amazing amazing retheme of that ride and well they kept half the fountains didn't they the use of actual physical props and then projections and also screens is a great mix they did it very well we have reached the five best rides in the park now of course in my opinion i don't want anyone to get mad at this so it's not a generalized list it's just what i think so if you want to leave yours leave it in the comments below because number five for me I think a lot of people will probably disagree with Tiger Rock, an old log flume that used to be known as Dragon Falls, and my god, is it a soaker? Not. It gets you wet, but it's not a Valhalla amount, not an uncomfortable amount of wetness, you know. I like it. The theming in the general area before you go on the ride, and of course that station building as well, it's all amazing. And on ride two, there is a bit of good theming here and there. I mean, if you take a look at the main drop, that massive tiger face, doesn't it look amazing? I just love a good old classic log flume. Number four is Croc Drop. A lot of the time now, certain effects on the ride and maybe even the ride system itself just doesn't seem to work. But the reason I put it at number four is because when you get that full cycle where it's all working, you've got the mist working, the ride spin system working too, audio is synced and you get a longer cycle or even the shorter cycle in general, you just, oh, it's top three worthy, you know? Just, yeah, I've kind of lowered it down because it doesn't work half the time. Number three is Vampire. The old arrow suspended roller coaster with the Vacoma trains and it has two lift hills, one massive drop halfway through and that, that drop actually does really catch you off guard to be fair. And it's been running for so many years now. You know what? I'm not the biggest fan of this ride, but as I said, I have to appreciate the history of this thing. It goes way back. The fact it swings in and out of the trees, it has calm sections where you're just sort of meandering through and then it also has those massive drops as mentioned is just a great ride at number two drum roll please which is going to be number one which is number two oh it is dragon's fury this marathon spinning coaster is a very and i mean very crazy ride if you get it to spin lot last time i did this ride i genuinely couldn't see for the whole thing it was that fast spinning it should be illegal. Also, that colour scheme is lovely, you know. The red and the grey with the yellow and red trains. It's beautiful. And it is just a bit mad if you think about it. But the one thing I'd say that doesn't make it a number one spot and makes it a number two instead is that station and queue line area. It just doesn't really do much, does it? It just looks like a metal box. Not a big fan. But my number one is, of course, you see it coming. You realise that I haven't said it yet. And you go, oh, he hasn't mentioned. Mandrill Mayhem, the new for this year. B&M Wing Coaster. I'm not going to say the full name of it because it's way too long. It has four launches, one physical inversion, but when you're on it, it goes upside down twice and three times if you're at the back. But either way, as much as I'm saying it's an incredible ride and stuff, I can't go without saying that it is one of the weirdest rides that's probably opened in recent years. I mean, just look at it. Why does it go up a curved spike winged and then uh, it's, it's cool, but mm. it makes for a spectacle off ride though. And on ride, it is great too. The launches are really punchy for a family coaster. You've got hang time over the inversions and there's even some unexpected moments in places. Even with the train alone, as much as some of the seats you sit on, you feel like you're going over multiple potholes whilst you're riding it. The fact each ride is different depending on what row you're on, because obviously the back row feels completely different to the row behind it. And then front row feels completely different to that. Like it's all different. And then obviously that point that did make Dragon's Fury go down is the theming because the theming in the world of Jumanji and that ride is on point. It looks amazing. That massive Jaguar, the little queue line Easter eggs and just the whole area in general, as I said, is simply, simply lovely. I really enjoy that ride and I enjoy all the rides on this list, except from Rattlesnake. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see that Alton Towers one. Good night.